Okay, this is the second part in my two-part NTSC series. This part is going to start the off you with the, the learning part. If you haven't already seen the learning part on NTSC Video Basics or if you don't already know a fair bit about NTSC, I strongly recommend you go watch that now by clicking here. Otherwise, let's get started with this neat little uh, chroma sort of device thing and I'll explain how you can get that nice color out of your little AVR without any extra semiconductors. Okay, so now we're at the learning part for number two. This is how to do the color. A uh, quick review though, we have our nice little line. It's got a sync pulse. It's got this little breezeway color burst and back porch picture data. And we go again. Before, I didn't talk about what this color burst was. But uh, now it's time to go do that. So let's take a look at the, the newer, newer thing here. So some of the basics here. With uh, NTSC, it's not RGB. It's not like a VGA monitor. That would just be too darn easy. What it is, is it's HSV, so hue, saturation, and value. And that's, that's only sort of. It's actually YIQ color, but I, it's not actually go into what that means now. Let's keep it simple. Let's take it as hue, saturation, and value, which is a close enough approximation. So what we have is we have hue. Think colors of the rainbow, kind of yellow onto red onto kind of like green, or sorry, yellow onto green onto blue onto kind of purpley onto red onto kind of orange and back to yellow. So think of, I guess, color wheel, rainbow, that sort of thing. You have saturation. How vivid is the color? Is it a really bright, just popping orange? Or is it kind of a dingy brown? And uh, so we have hue, saturation, we have value. How bright? So is it bright? Is it dark? Is it, I mean, if it's white, it's going to be very bright. If it's going to be black, it's going to be very dark. And you can have like a kind of a dim orange. Vivid, but dim. So we have these three values. They're not RGB, but they're a different thing called a color space. So you can totally Wikipedia that word and learn a lot of neat stuff. I'm not going to exactly go into the whole YUV versus YIQ and all that other stuff. So how does how do you get these three values from one signal? Well, the value is the voltage on the line. That's what we already saw last time. The hue is the phase of the chroma signal. And we'll go into exactly what that means. How do we get phase from something like that? In saturation, the 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 intensity is actually how strong the chroma signal is being modulated on top of the existing signal. So let's take a, a little bit of a closer look. First of all, that color burst that I didn't mention last time. Well, now we care about it. What is this? It's actually a little burst of 3.58 megahertz. You're going to need to maintain a clock internally that, that operates at 3.58 megahertz, and it's going to have to stay operating there you can't really deviate from it from line to line. You're going to have to maintain it. What this does is it gets your phase in sync with the television's phase and it tells the television how strong to expect the colors. So the color burst is kind of only like, a, if you were to say repeat this somewhere else in the frame, it would only be kind of bright. If you want to make something very bright, you're going to have to make it stronger than what this color burst appears as. So what about this phase thing? So we're going to have this, this our, our phase, which is set by the color burst, and we're going to have to maintain this the entire time, from beginning to end until we finish our thing. Sure, it can drift a little bit, but you can't be changing the phase every line. A lot of televisions will either get really confused or just throw it out entirely. But let's take a look at what this actually means for color. So the idea would be that we would have our regular value signal, and it would be, you know, say midway up between white and black, say it's gray. And if we want to display yellow, then we output another signal on top of it that's at the exact same phase as the color burst signal. So we, this is our reference signal, and now yellow is 100% in phase. When it goes low, we go low. When it goes high, we go high. And that, that's all fine and dandy. Say we want to uh, output sort of a green cyan color. Well, then we're going to want to shift the phase just a little bit. This is actually shifting it, uh, I guess, forward um, 90 degrees. 
and that's going to give us kind of a green cyan hue. Say we want blue, uh, then that's, that's pretty simple. All we have to do is kind of shift it 180 degrees out of phase. Or red purple, then all we have to do here is just shift it 270 degrees out of phase. In fact, this is uh, only four different colors, but if we operate our AVR and overclock it at 28.636 megahertz, we can actually get eight colors. So uh, I think that's, that's kind of uh, neat here. So how do, we, how do we go about doing that? Well, here's the tricks with the AVR. We have a PWM. A PWM can be set to turn on and off at certain fixed points. And we can use a timer for this. Say we use timer 2, and it always counts 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That way, timer 2 is now going to maintain the color burst for us. We don't have to use timers for this. Uh, the, the previous video, the one on the Riff Rider thing, does not. But we, we will for, for a little bit later when we're actually going to be doing it ourselves. Say we want to make a really intense yellow. Well, then all we really have to do is we have to say, take this thing which used to be only one cycle, so when this is nice and smoothed out, this little spike here is going to show up as barely, as, not barely anything, but it's not going to show up as very important. However, if we make something that's 50% duty cycle, this is a very, very strong signal, so we're going to get a very intense yellow. Or if we want it to be a pale yellow, we can just make it a very weak signal, and it's going to be substantially more pale. Uh, this gives you hue and saturation, but there's some of these notes. One is, these are square waves. The AVR is going to make square waves, and it's not going to make sine waves. So it's an approximation. And it might be good enough for what you want to do, it might not. TVs aren't very friendly to this sort of square wave nastiness, but they'll accept it. So there's a ton of projects online that show how you can do this right. Eh, whatever. As long as you don't need it to work every time, this is kind of fun for just, you know, messing around. What about value? So I'm telling you how to make these, these hue and saturations. All you have to do is mix it in. If you have an existing signal, then uh, it's going to be very low, and uh, you're going to just, just output it on top of the signal. So gray plus this chroma equals a color. So let's take an example. This is uh, the actual schematic that I work with, and what I have is I have a Chroma PWM, which is hooked up to port D, pin 3, and I have a filter to remove any kind of DC offset on it, and this little 500 ohm resistor so that it doesn't completely overwhelm the NTSC output. And I have these other four values here so that I can get much more control over the grayscale. What this buys me is the ability to kind of choose my color or choose my intensity of gray much more closely. Before all I cared about was black and white, now I kind of want a couple more shades of gray. Understandably, even though this provides 16, as we have 4 bits, we can have 4 bit resolution, many of those codes are actually not usable because they're down below the blanking and black levels. And again, because this is a square wave, we have another filter here to try to clean it up a little it's still not going to do a very good job. It's still going to be terrible. You're going to want to use inductors. You're going to probably want to use something active. This is just for getting something that kind of sort of works. So again, so we have A, B, C, D. These control value, just like they did in the previous one, except now there's two more. And we also have this chroma PWM thing on top. So that's really about all we have to worry about with the, the, the chroma. It's, it's pretty basic, but it was worth making its own thing. So uh, let's get started with the Let's Code portion of it.